Hello, welcome back to PlayStation Access. Welcome back to Access Granted. This week with me, Dave, and you, Rob. Hello. Rob. Um, Nathan is on holiday, and Holly and Dan are on a secret mission uh, this week. One of many secret missions. One of many secret missions. Yeah. So you've ended up with us two. Um, we're holding down the, th the, the fort, or playing loads of PES. We haven't decided which yet. Or both. <laughs> or both. Yeah, maybe hopefully there's like a Venn diagram where those two things line yeah. up. And we've got loads of great comments this week. Seriously, loads of really good comments this week um, that I've enjoyed reading. But first, it's the ultimate grudge match. Um, it's what people have been calling for. I don't know for why. For weeks and weeks. <laughs> why? And I've seen it brewing in the office. It's Rob versus Dan in Star Wall. It's one on onesie. <laughs> This is gonna be one on one. Right, so, Dan, we're doing uh, one on onesie this week, mm -hmm. apparently by popular demand. Well, although, I can see why. <laughs> although, if you lose, there's no. There's no punishment for you. You don't, because you're you're away for secret missions next week. Exactly. So you're not going to be having to wear the ones. So basically. So I win either way. Either I don't have to wear the ones. Should we say if I lose, I Dave has to wear the ones? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're playing uh, Narwhal, which is a game that has been featured in a uh, one-on-one -on before. Basically, if you've not seen Narwhal, we both control these narwhals, customizable narwhals, and we have to pierce the heart of the, our opponent just by flopping around. Yes. I've gone for quite a smart narwhal. Where's the... What's that? In a fez and a suit. Or should I go Jason? Or Judge? Mike? Archangel? This is great. Just Jeff, pick anyone. Matt, but come on, let's just play. Uh, Jeff. Jeff wants to ride me. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. I'm ready. Come on, Jeff! Out. Come on, Jeff! Oh, oh yes, yes, yes! Oh. That would have been a terrible have you start. Got a fez on? Oh no! Yes! No, two! You got a double strike I'm a in there. Okay, I'm gonna have to. A fez and a suit. I'm gonna have to <gasps> up my game. Oh, come on, come on, come oh, no. on! Yes! Oh, don't leave the back belly in exposed. It, back in it, back in the game. I'd learn the hard way. Oh no! Oh. No, 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 no! I really don't want to be in the onesie. He's going this way. Come on! Oh. Yes, yes! I love how it goes slow motion when yeah, it gets, makes it gets it so all tense. The more tense. Oh no, I'm, I'm basically <gasps> I'm revealing myself oh! to you now. Why did I do that? That was an idiot move by me. I don't know why I did that. Jeff's a bad steerer. Oh! Again! It's Jeff's fault. I can't get you either. I'm teasing this is you now. bad. I'm 4 1 down. Follow the fez. Yes! Oh. How have I missed again now? Oh. Yes! Oh. How have I missed again now? Oh. Yes! Yes, come here. Come here, Dan. Be pissed! Yes! <gasps> How oh, are you surviving? That was beautiful. Every time. What an amazing getaway. See, you've done well with your fez, because it's hard to distinguish, like, at a glance, what yeah. is your heart and what is your fez. Camouflage. Oh. No. Be killed. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yes. <gasps> it's got to be. It's got to be. How is it not? See ya. Get no. away. Oh, I don't believe this. Come. Oh no! Yes. I don't believe this. This is so one-sided. Again, how have you avoided that? That is just right there. Is oh! I honestly think the fez is cheating a bit. What do you mean he's cheating? Because I oh! oh, oh. And again. When oh, we practice, yes. this is stupid. <laughs> this is stupid. Come here! Oh. When we practice it, right, one. This that is the comeback starts I'm just now. Just making you feel better. The comeback starts now. It's time. Oh, just, oh no! Oh. I don't believe this. Just a touch that was. Yep. No. Yep. Yep. <sighs> no more revealing <gasps> my soft side. <gasps> oh, yes. This has been one absolutely more. Come on. atrocious. One more. Oh, <sighs> nope. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Uh, where are you? Oh. It's again, it's whenever whenever the flipping record <gasps> button is pressed. Yeah, whenever there's yeah, pressure. Yeah. Don't. Ooh. Oh, that away. was nearly it. That could have been it. Come on. Come on. Oh. Yes. 
It was I won. I won 9-7 when we played the practice. I knew we should have recorded that one. <sighs> Rob, you need to get in the onesie. God's sake. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for comments of the week. I'm so sick of this. Rob, I Next can't time I'm it. just going to record the practice match. What happens? It's like you get red light fever or something. And Dan did cheat. What do or you at mean? least it's a sly tactic, isn't it? He had the fez on, the red fez, and his heart was red as well. Right. And so, like, as I'm, you know, at the corner of my eye looking at his star wall, I th I don't know whether his heart is on there or there. It's, it's, you're it's blaming me a, off. You're blaming his fez. Yeah. For your, your. Did he not have a fez in the practice round? No. He changed <laughs> his costume for the real thing. Fez is a not cool. You in see, star everyone movie. thinks that Dan is uh, this laid back guy, but look at that, a Fez, a cheat's Fez. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, it was a cheating cheat. Cheat, cheat. Right, well, we'll have to have a rematch at some point because it really is a grudge match now. I think this might there, surpass, yeah. you know, Nathan Eyes uh, onesie. It's the first time I've ever lost to Dan <laughs> in a video game, <laughs> ever. And of course, it's the one. It's, it's the one I was. One. It's the one that we've recorded for everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, everybody. And I'm sure if you write in the comments, we'll have Rob and Dan back for more one-on-ones action. Since it's, apparently this makes Rob even more furious than losing to me, uh, which tends to happen in Access Grant as well. Uh, loads of amazing comments this week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for writing in. It really does make the show a lot better. And first of all, just a really nice one that made me happy from Ho Michele, who says, Axis Granted is becoming seriously good. The development of Dave and Nath's friendship and the tweaking of the show structure deserves some mo notable love. Keep it up. And I just... <laughs> Hello, here's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tweaking of the show. Keep we've it up. This week we've tweaked it by getting rid of Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I just wanted to say thank you very much because that means a lot. We do try and... We do always want to make Access Granted better and better, and we do read your suggestions, and we do have loads of ideas. It's difficult to fit it in with all the other videos. I think sometimes it gets it gets a second thought, but it's nice to know that there's a committed group of people out there who are who, who are, appreciate, who appreciate it. it exactly. And uh, and reading that comment really did make me feel very nice. And it was the top comment, in fact. That's good. So, you know, some other people agree with you. So thank you very much. I mean, we are able to pin with comments that one. now. So did That's true. Do I that, didn't though? do it. Maybe Holly did. <laughs> I should, I, did, I should have thought of that. Um, we've got a few gaming confessions this week, Rob. Oh, is that back, is it, now? Well, it's... it's I, it, I don't watch Axis Grind. It never... You're it not one of the committed few. <laughs> so, it never left. It just... It's, it's, it's just... It's there if, if people... It's in, on the back burner. If people have some gaming confessions, right. it's there. If they don't, then it, it, it goes away. Uh, and there's lots of heartbreak this week in gaming oh, confessions. Uh, but there's a, a classic ruse from Dakota S. First of all, who says, gaming confession, I was playing Final Fantasy IX and I was part I was at the part where Vivi gets snatched at the village of Dali on disc one. Yeah. Yeah, that mm -hmm. mean that's yeah. a real thing. And my dad came in and made me go outside uh, to play with my sister, who I think was ten, so I would have been twelve. Anyway, I wanted to know what happened to Vivi so bad that I purposely got in an argument with my sister just so my dad would send me to my room so I could play. That's great, isn't it? When when going to your room becomes the thing you want to happen. Yeah, it is. It's a rare thing. But I mean, surely parents are wise to this now. I, I mean, my parents were wise to it. My parents were like, go to your room. The PlayStation's no is coming PlayStation. out of yeah, your room. Exactly, you know. <laughs> I will have this on top of the fridge. Yeah. My parents actually went down the sort of guilt trip route of like, go to your room, but don't play your PlayStation. You know, and it's like, it's up to you. Are you gonna, <laughs> you know, they trusted me. And like that always worked. It would always work on me. I couldn't. I, couldn't. I mean, if if ever that happened to me, then you know the telltale sign of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know when you press the, the button yeah. and you've forgotten to mute the TV. Oh, <gasps> trying to turn because it was always those old TVs with buttons. You only had buttons on the TV. Yeah. Just like frantically pressing the button, like. It's like when you go to bed now or go to bed. I mean, I'll look at my phone for two hours. Yeah. And you know. My wife will be there asleep, and I'll just play this YouTube video, and I've not turned the volume down. It's yeah. like, boosh! <laughs> yeah. like, oh my god! Always happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, I think everyone can relate to that. Although, yeah, surely parents now are wise to that. Um, but then maybe kids are want more are wise again. It's the it's an, a, a constantly evolving yeah escalation exactly. Um, 
On to the heartbreak now, starting with uh, Lou Schultz, who says, gaming confession, my girlfriend bought me Witcher 3 for my birthday. She started to get angry whenever I played it because, in her opinion, I would not spend enough time with her and focused on the game too much. Let's just say that Yen and Triss are the only two ro romance options I have left. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, to be honest, oh. uh, Lou, if you're anything like me and Mass Effect 2, you won't even have those options. So, um, good luck. No. Good luck with you there. But, um, you know, The Witcher 3 is a particularly good game, isn't it? It's an unusually <laughs> good game. If you, you were, if, you, if, you if can anything was going to... yourself with the fact that you've got a really good game. If there. you were going to, you know, break up with anyone over any game, it would be probably in the, the top sort of three. <laughs> That's a new Friday Maybe feature, five. I think. <laughs> Seven <laughs> games, it's worth breaking up over. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely. Uh, but yeah. then she did buy you the game. So yeah. it's, I mean, maybe she was a keeper. It's, it swings <laughs> and roundabouts. It's, a, it's an ever evolving sort of uh, situation. Have you ever had any romance um, on the rocks due to, due to games, Rob? I don't know if I've ever told this story, but... Um, I can't believe it! I've uncovered <laughs> something! I'm so excited! Well, I'm sure I've told you this before. I don't know. <laughs> but I, it feels awful now. <laughs> well, you've got Maybe to finish it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, my ex-girlfriend, this is uh, like 12 years ago when I was at university. Yeah. Like, our relationship was on the rocks anyway. It was a long right. distance relationship. Um, but the final straw of the relationship came when she phoned me during the final boss of Final Fantasy XII. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it didn't last past oh, that no. phone call. Did you even, what, you answered the phone? Yeah. Were you, did you pause the game? Yeah, I have to. Oh, it right. was the final boss. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I didn't want to think of you just like, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, no, yeah. <laughs> just like, oh, just throwing out of a window or something. So what, it was more impatient then? Oh, for God, I can imagine you like seeing it ring as you're so like, oh, it's pausing. Sort of very, Hello? Yeah, it's what happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. look, it's just over. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I was surprised about that, Rob. I thought maybe... I'm sure I've told you that before. I didn't know that. I don't think so. I thought maybe, uh, uh, hoping that, it, you know, one game that might lead you to some uh, relationship angst might be Pez. Like our next writer, Christopher Campbell, who says, Broke up with my girlfriend in 2001 while playing Pro Evolution Soccer on the hardest level in a World Cup with the Irish team, and three of my mates were with me in the same team. We had made it to the quarterfinals and she wanted to go meet to talk about where the relationship was going. Oh, so I no. just told her it's over. <laughs> but we went on to win the World Cup. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, oh. a World Cup run with three of your mates on the hardest difficulty level and, and, and doing it with, with Ireland is a, a special memory. It, it is, it? yeah. Memory. I mean, is it worth breaking up over? I d wouldn't like to say, but I'm not going to judge you because that's... That's a special memory that you've got forever. It is. That I don't have. So, you know, well, well, well done. But sad know. times, though. <laughs> it's sad. Sad times. Yeah, but it's all part of growing up. It is, yeah. Yeah, I really should stop uh, breaking up with my girlfriends over my, my Pez World Cup runs. Um, so, Rob, since you're here this week, yeah. I thought I'd make a special effort to uh, jump into the Friday feature, read, find some comments, okay. uh, which this oh, week... Good. Yeah, exactly. You know how you uh, you enjoy these. This week. What about Undertale? <laughs> Have you got any of those? Uh, all the time. Undertale's coming out now on PS4, so finally we can. No, I haven't. I haven't got any of those. Oh, I've done. I'm just being nice. Nice to you. All right. Uh, it was about spoilers and how people have you know games we've had spoiled for us and yeah. how it's happened. Uh, so I thought I'd read some of these, starting with um, the Who fan one who said some dude putting a huge spoiler in a thumbnail for his Uncharted 4 Let's Play and it appeared on my recommendations for YouTube. Oh dear. That's rubbish, isn't it? Well, you're not even like searching for Le uh, Uncharted 4 Let's Plays or anything. And just some thumbnail, just a thumbnail. I'm trying to think what that could be. Well, I wouldn't like to say, no. but it could, I mean, it could be an image could be of an something. Image. Yeah. You know, a little bit like what happened to you with the dynamic theme, or it could just be the words like Uncharted 4, Drake, Killed. Da, 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 at the yeah. end. He's not killed. Or is he? I don't know. Dave, Dave. you could cut this bit out, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> I'm Jimmy. <God>. Spoiler, everyone. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> who everyone That's loved, it. by the way. Everyone's oh, a yeah, big fan of Jimmy Spoiler. Yeah, some good reaction, didn't he? So yeah. he might be a keeper. He might uh, be up there with old uh, Brian he, Cox. He now. always has to be introduced with that same. Uh, yeah. That same introduction. Although people seem to be commenting that they want, whenever I do like a spoiler warning, for Jimmy Spoiler to give the spoiler warning. That kind Doesn't of defeats make any sense. the ob that defeats make the whole sense. point of his character. No, there will be no spoiler warning. He will just come on and exactly. give it to you straight away. Maybe you just see him point. He could just his head pokes up in the in That's the corner. That's the spoiler warning. The image of him. He's about to ah uh, yeah that could work. Um, so that's pretty bad. What about this one from Matthew Evans, who says, Troy Baker spoiled Red Dead Redemption I for me at that. a panel. I saw that comment. I mean, scant on the details, what, how I'd like to know exactly what the story was, but just awful. There's only one way you can spoil Red Dead, really, isn't there? There's only, yeah, well, yeah. But I mean, what were the circumstances? What was he talking about? But the, the you know, I love that it's come at the excitement of, oh, I'm gonna go to the panel and see <laughs> Troy Baker, this is great, I love him. He does all my favorite voices, all my favorite characters. I'm gonna ask him about Joel. And he's just like, boom, have a spoiler. <laughs> uh, why, Troy, why would you do this? I loved you. Uh, and lastly, lots of people wanted the answer to this question. Rob, right. uh, which you, I'm sure you've probably read. It, uh, I'll read Mitchell's comment though, who says, you might as well make a top seven list of cliffhangers in video games because you left a cliffhanger in the Final Fantasy 15 entry, Rob. I was eager to found, find out what was spoiled for you in the comments. Well, and wait, well, I should, um, are you gonna spoil it for me now? No, I'm not gonna spoil it. Uh, that was a little bit of a, a scripting, dropping the ball on my part. I did actually have the spoiler for Final Fantasy XV in the script, right. and then decided I didn't really need it in there, so took it out, but I left my intro line where I said there will be spoilers for Final Fantasy XV. So I didn't were. actually mention it in the video itself. I see. Um, but I'm not going to say it now, obviously. I guess but if, not. If you played Final Fantasy XV, and if you know Final Fantasy XV, there is something that happens, you know, is around, it near half, the end? around halfway through oh. the game. You know the big event. If you've played Final Fantasy XV, the big event that happens around <laughs> halfway that you weren't expecting to happen. Wait a minute, there's a big event around halfway? <sighs> oh, you disgust me in your spoilers. That's awful. Uh, well, hopefully that'll make some people happy. It's weird that people want to know what was spoiled for you. It was it's just that. funny, isn't it? It was that. Like, the big thing was spoiled for me. Um, the other thing we've been doing on Axis Granted, Rob, which you won't know because you haven't been watching, is we're, we're trying, we like, we, we like to get sort of commenter editions for right. the Tuesday checklist. Okay. We've been trying to come up with a name for this. We haven't got one yet. Uh, people have had a go this week, but I haven't had time to go through all the comments and, and read them all. So do keep coming with these ideas. So it's just got no intro this week. This is it, me doing it now. Okay. Uh, and uh, so last week's Tuesday checklist was uh, six games that ripped up the rule book. Yes. Basically. So we've got some other ones here, starting with uh, Propaganda Pat. Propaganda Pat, by the way, sounds like a character that you'd have in the Friday feature. Yeah. Propaganda Pat. I mean, hopefully... Oh, it'd be propaganda... getting really political, wouldn't it, if we had a character <laughs> called Propaganda Pat? <laughs> yeah, it might be dangerous. Uh, anyway. Especially at the moment. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but let's start, uh, see what Propaganda Pat says. He says, For me, the game that threw out the rule book was Spec Ops The Line. I was expecting yeah. your generic third-person shooty McSplody gameplay, uh, but it really threw me for a loop when the most subtle foreshadowing and gameplay. I don't want to spoil what happens if you haven't played the game. I highly recommend it. Which is an excellent shout. I mean, I have, I think I did a Friday feature about games that broke the fourth wall or something like that. I can't remember what the title was. Yeah. Uh, Spec Ops was in that one. Yeah. Because it just does amazing things. And like I say, you're not expecting it. You are expecting just a cover shooter. Yeah. Regular military cover shooter, and it's not like that at all. It's really, yeah. really shocking and thought provoking. If you've not played it yet, play it. Yeah, that's a really good shout. Uh, Dan Farrell 98 says Life is Strange rewrites the rules for story based games with choices. Usually you make, a, you make a decision and you're stuck with it, but with the time travel, you don't have to be. But the game is clever in that it never makes it clear that all the choices may have negative consequences. And sadly, Life is Strange, a game that I have yet to finish. I've played the first episode, and it's, I've had the first episode played for two years, maybe. I don't know, since it came out, I played the first episode, really enjoyed it, and I haven't, I haven't gone back and finished it. And That's everybody so everywhere says it's excellent. Typically you, Dave. Oh, have you finished it? No. Well, what are you talking about <laughs> then? Have you started it? Yes. Right, well, that's this, I can't believe this. this well, the I same didn't thing, start then. it two years ago. I started it quite recently. Right. After but, Holly's recommendation. And, and you, and you, how far did you get? Um, 
some time into the game. Into the first, so you yeah. haven't even finished the first episode. No, but then like, Elite Dangerous came, then Inside came. I know, lots of games have come. Lots of games have come along Hell since Blade I started too. came. Well, yeah, I know. It's funny you should mention that because uh, we've got one last entry, which is actually two entries uh, from Smith E, who says, Near Automata was a refreshing take on game design and perspectives. Automata. Oh, right, sorry. It seamlessly transitioned from a sandbox to a side-scroller to top-down bullet hell-style shooter, keeping the gameplay fresh. On top of this, subsequent playthroughs let you play as other characters, again challenging the perspective by allowing you to view more story from an alternative viewpoint. Which is cool, uh, really cool, and I didn't realise that about, uh, you know, subsequent playthroughs. That's really, really interesting, having different perspectives on the gameplay. Yeah. Uh, and I've got to be honest, Nier Automata is not a game that I've I've started, not played any of it. And again, everybody everywhere saying Holly's been it's raving about amazing. it. Amazing. Holly's been raving about it. I don't know why Holly didn't put it in. She was she, she thought about it and she decided not to. She decided to go with Absu, which I thought was a strange choice. But you know, that's that's up to her. But because you know, everyone's saying Neil Thomason, like it's like a million games in one, but in a in a way that somehow works. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. Um, but Smithy goes on to say Late entry, I'm around four hours into Hellblade and have to say I don't think I've experienced the use of audio to such amazing results. Mm. Uh, through headphones, the 3D voices mixed with narration and environment is pretty special and really gives a sense of Senua's mental illness. Uh, and Hellblade is a game that I've not played or... I've got to say I felt the same way about Hellblade when I first put it on and first played it. I did think to myself, wow, I don't think I've ever played anything like this. Really? Which is a... Uh, is rare it's nowadays really rare. to have something like that and you really do have to use headphones when you play it because you get the whole effect of uh, all the voices does in it actually head. suggest does it say we should just you know does the, is the game tell you you should I maybe wear headphones I can't remember if it doesn't because like, a lot of people have said this you've got to wear headphones to play Hellblade uh, definitely right if you want the proper experiences for, for what Ninja Theory intended with yeah. all the, the audio and the audio is fantastic well, that's good. I really want to play it. How much have you played, do you think? Again, not a lot. Maybe the first hour or so. Right, okay. Well, okay. There's too much to play. I've gone yes. back to playing No Man's Sky this weekend. I know. And I have to resist the temptation. I've got I too much to play. Let me tell you. I've got about I 10 am, games unfinished on the go. I'm absolutely loving it. And uh, I, I played it at launch for hours and hours and hours. Maybe, I don't know. Well, I say hours and hours and hours. For me, it was hours. It was probably like 20 hours, maybe 25 hours. And I didn't, I didn't play it with any of the subsequent updates until now, and I just think it's amazing, and it's completely overhauled. My favourite thing, though, is the photo mode, which is amazing. I've taken, really? I have taken so many photos this weekend, and I don't really do a lot with photo mode usually, but it's the perfect like Venn diagram for me. Sci-fi, you know, just flying in space, having battles with ships, going through asteroid fields, flying over landscapes that no one else has ever seen before. Uh, there's a function which is if you're on a planet you can change the time of day which is cool and we saw that in Horizon Zero Dawn which is an excellent feature. Yes. A really really good feature if you're in space I think you can do this on the planet as well but well, you basically can but if you're in space you when you're in photo mode you can click in the right stick and it will move the sun to wherever you're looking so you can position the sun behind a planet behind a space station behind so you so just in photo mode, you, you just can pause, move. you can move the sun to wherever you want. So you want that amazing shot of an eclipse happening, you can get the eclipse. You know, you want the How sun just... How does it just, do that? Because in No Man's Sky, the sun isn't just like an object that's part of the skybox, is it? It's it's a physical thing. Yeah, but, well, you know, in photo mode, I don't know. How do they, they do anything in games? I don't know. Game development is a mystery to me. But that's what I've been playing anyway, so I don't know if there's room for Hellblade in my life right now because I feel a, a fervent desire to get to the centre of the galaxy again. Again. Okay, well, I say again. I feel the desire again. So all that's left to talk about this week is what's coming up this week. Um, and we've got a Tuesday checklist tomorrow, which is, I've written it down so I don't forget, six games you definitely sucked at when you first played them. Oh, it's a good one, this one. Is it? I enjoyed it. I'm in it, but I can't remember what I said. But, I mean, it could have been any games, really. I mean, <laughs> if we're honest, it could have been well, let's several. Not, there you go. No, let's not spoil what games no. are on the list. No, no, absolutely. But, um, so get thinking, what games do you think we will have sucked at when we first started playing? All them? games, you noobs. Hey, ooh. 
Um, so so stick stick that in the comments. Let us know what you think. And yeah, we will be. I will be going through those. Uh, that, that video, the comments of that video for the next week's Access Grind. So do let us know um, your ideas. Uh, we've got a week full of regulars, thank God. We've got the store, we've got a Friday feature coming up. Um, and also a few extra bits. Uh, I think the four of us played a couple of games. Uh, I have got an Agents of Mayhem video coming up. Yep. Uh, and as I said, it's just Rob and I in the office all week this week. So, um, you know. Please do watch the channel and make us feel good whilst we're on our own, churning yeah. out videos and... And playing pairs. And playing pairs. Probably playing pairs. If there's any videos that don't go up this week, blame pairs. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Um, Rob, thank you for, for visiting and wearing the onesie again. <sighs> and uh, please do comment because it's what makes Axe of Granted happen. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>